Oh, my mic was muted. Yes. So, right. My, module, I mean, group seven is just basically to study the other trends. We're going to do some equations from, some calculations from module one and two. Right, so what is the, what is the formula for pH? Starting with pH. Negative log hydrogen and concentration. Negative log hydrogen ion. Negative log O. I mean H. What is the formula for pOH? What is equal to fourteen? The plus the plus the plus the K A times K B. R. How did you? I said is equal to one times ten to the minus fourteen, which is what the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. From the formula for a weak acid, how do we find K A? Let's say or this section. You have to find the hydrogen. The, the ion oh. over the, the formula. The formula. It would have the been ion the product OH. over concentration of reactants. Yeah. Yeah. The concentration of the base. For a weak acid, remember we assume that these two are equal. So even though it's products over reactant, we, we just use H plus squared. Okay. Question, if you have this formula, right? How do you transpose it to get the concentration of H plus? You would just have K times the square root of the constant times. H plus. Is equal to the, the, square. the square root of the constant times the concentration of the reactor. Okay. Out here. So from that, if you need the H plus concentration. Of course, KB would be equal to OH minus squared divided by the concentration of concentration of the day right, of whichever weak base we are given. And so the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to the square root of the KB times the wheat base concentration. All right. All right, so let's just do some quick calculation. Anybody have calculator? I left mine. Yes, sir, I have yes, a calculator.
All right, what would you do for number one? Yeah, that's a negative log oh, 0 0.1, which will give you one. So and then negative a, log. Negative a, log 0 log. 0.1, and you get one? Yeah. What would you do for number two? Negative log 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. Not that. So that Wait, is it's not a strong two. acid. Yeah, it's, it's a strong yeah, acid. Yeah, that time is 0 0.05 by 2, and then right. you would have log it. So the two hydrogen there. Oh yeah. Yeah, times it, so it is zero point zero five times two. It would be zero point one. It would also be. Yeah, and then when I log that one. Right. And for C, what would you do? You log it to log the zero point one. Negative log 0 0.1. Yes, so there you get one. And that's it. Then you would have minus it from the 14 to get a pH. Because I think I get a pH. Exactly right. So this is, oh, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. So the my jack said, it's a base. So what you just calculated is, as Kat said, pOH. So this was pH, pH, this is pOH. Go on pH, it is 14 minus pOH, which is 14 minus 1. Sorry, so that would have been 13. Yeah. All right, let's move on again. How do we do this one? You have to find. Have to find what? Oh wait, it's not finished. Um, we would have to find the H concentration. Have to give it a KA. Yeah, when you just, give it that. Yeah, I'm just using a random number here. I don't remember what it is. So how would we work it out? Say as a KA equal. KA equal. H plus concentration over the methanoic acid rate. concentrate. Right. Yeah. We, you must always square it. The top right, that's what I'm going to ask. The top part is always squared, right? Right, it has to square. Yeah. Because remember. OK. In for the equation, it would have been H, let me put it here, so, so methanoic acid would dissociate to give PO H C O O minus plus H plus. It would have been this ion times H plus over this, because these two are the same, we just square the H plus. It, it should always be squared. All right. So as I said, if okay. you want the H plus ion concentration. Yeah, that's the H plus to, equal. The square root of KA. So just, put, root, just put the number down. All right. So oh, four times, four times to the negative six times mm -hmm. the 0 0.15. How much I get? Before you square root it. Answer. All right, so before my square root, it might get um, six times 10 to the negative seven. All right, so when you square root it, how much you get? I get 7.75 times 10 to the negative four. Okay. 
I get seven point seven five times ten to the negative to four. the negative four. Yeah. And then no pH B equals to seven point seven five times ten to the minus four. How much I get? Three. Just put three. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, so in this one, you want pH from Ka. This one, you want Ka from pH. How do we work that out? First, what is pH? No, sorry, what is Ka? So Ka, Ka will be the reactant over the, the product over the reactant, sorry. All right, so again, H, H plus squared over the concentration of methanoic acid. Do we have the concentration of H plus? You can get it from the pH. Oh, we get it from the pH. Wait, no. I um, mean, the anti logo. Yeah, you would anti log it. You would anti log negative three. pH is equal to, no, sorry. H plus is equal to negative antilog negative pH. But an antilog on certain calculator you would push shift log negative was it zero point one five so anti log a shift log negative point zero five so you won't put this on your paper as in the work you know just put anti log negative ph right with negative zero point one five how much you get I got one times ten to the negative three. Get one. One times ten to the negative three. So I have minus zero point one five. Is not minus three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah minus. Sorry. Oh, okay. You can't use me the other side. I got. Actually, you did work it with our point one five. Three, what are you working with? Can you get one? One yes, times sir. ten to one the times negative three. One times ten to the negative three. All right, we'll come back this. Three or so. We'll come back one. This answer here, so. Let's query it off this. If you get three for the pH, then you're supposed to get back this. We'll come back this answer for it again. Sir. Yes. Why I say when I square root it, so I get three times ten to the negative four. The answer for here, you'll get three times ten to the negative. No, sir. When when I square root the four times, well, yeah, basically when I square root the four, I just do. I put it one time in my calculator. I don't know if that's why. But. 
Hola, ¿qué chita? Tell me que todo swing a single. ¿Cómo se get? Sí. ¿Cómo se get, girl? The same step when I tell me to work it out little by little. I take the negative log of it. I get three. Um, negative log, I'm not the negative log part yet. No, man, over yeah, here, say no. I'm going to get back three. So you take the negative log of this and get three. And you're until of three, and you're getting one times 10 to do something. So let me see what you have. Let me have any calculator that give me. Oh, because time. she wrote that off, you know, because um, I three point one one. I don't think that would be a big difference still, but. We don't see, because I can't get three and then until I get and get it. Yeah, because she rounded it up to three. A three point one one would have been the initial, the answer for that. So when you're we'll negative, but when you're negative, love the three point one one, how much I get? I get seven point seven six. Same thing like that would be so. All right. Yeah, 7.76 times 10 to the negative 4. So, yeah, do you think that much just be hold on, so, a whole number? Look, so, when you do it with 3, you get 1 times 10 plus or something? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For real? For real. Really yes, real. sir. All right. Yes, yeah, so, all right, yeah. All right, good. So now we have the hydrogen ion concentration, so we can go ahead now and plug it in to our equation. H plus squared would be 7.06 times 10 to the minus 4 squared divided by 0 0.15. How much I get? Point zero one times ten to the negative six. All right. So four times ten to the negative six, just like we have here. So what I'm showing sure here, yes. You know, but I work with a tree. Can work with tree. with tree, right? If you work with tree, you are telling me I get one times ten to the minus something that can work. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, it has him from next that question here. Yeah. Right, so over here, I gave you a pH of 0 0.15 and Ka of 4 times 10 to the negative 6. And the pH, it work out to be, hold on, one second. Right, and the pH, it worked out to be 3.11. And then over here, I did the, Reverse, given the pH and the concentration that asks you for Ka. Yeah, until of the pH, you get the hydrogen ion concentration. And once you get the hydrogen ion concentration, you can go ahead and plug it into this formula. Right? That's the one with KB. Is anybody writing? All right, so for this one, go on KB. What is the formula for KB? KB equal um, OH 
KB equal equal OH minus squared. Squared. Yeah, over the NH3. Do we have the hydroxide ion concentration? No, sir. All right. How can we get it? PH equal the POH somewhere with the that that thing. No, that right? is the pH and subtract it from the fourteen. So when you find right. it, yeah, so you get the POH. Subtract that so from the fourteen. One POH is equal to fourteen minus pH, which is nine point eight five. That would be four point one five. Yes, sir. Then you log that. You mean antilog? Antilog. Wait, antilog. yeah, antilog POH. OH. Why are you antilog it? You have to antilog. If you have PH okay. and you want H plus, you antilog the PH, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so when you have POH and you want OH, you antilog POH. So the same okay. thing. Yeah. POH is for the base. PH is for the acid. If you want the hydroxide ion concentration, then it's antilog negative POH, which is antilog negative 4.15. How much you get? 7.0. E at times 10 to the negative 5. 7.0. E times 10 to the negative 5. Hold on. Right, you're gone. So we can go ahead now and do this equation. So KB is equal to the 7.0 E times 10 to the negative 5 squared. Divided by the 0 0.75. How much of it? Which was 6.68 times 10 to the negative 9. 6.68 times 10 to the? Negative 9. 10 to the negative 9, yeah. All right, so this time you are given KB and you want pH. What is the formula for pH? The antilog H plus. All right. No, come again. Formula for pH? The negative log. Right. pH, must say no. Negative log OH, sorry. Hold on. So pH is equal to negative log concentration of H plus. All right. Do we have the hydrogen ion concentration? No. What do we have? The NH, the the thing that yeah, the of, acid. Of KB of the acid concentration. What can we get using KB and the acid concentration? H plus. Hmm? Yes, sir, if you like make H plus with a formula, you can get 
You have the KB. Conjecture. Look at the formula for KB. Up oh, here. KB. Yeah. If oh. you have KB and the concentration of the base, what can you calculate? It's there now. Oh, you can calculate the weight. Exactly. So if KB is hydroxide ion squared over the concentration of ammonia, how would we get the hydroxide ion concentration? KB times the um, NH3. Yeah, Question. If I wanted the concentration of the H plus ion. How? They go square root the same, the same thing. Would and square the root it. KA times the acid, right? So if I have, look at KA formula and look at KB formula. Basically the same thing, you know. So if I want OH, what would be the formula? The square root of the KB and square NH3. Root of the KB times the concentration of NH3. right. So if it was the acid, it is the square root of Ka times the concentration of the acid. All right, so from there, what happens? So OH ion is equal to the square root of what? 6.68 6 times 10 to the minus nine multiplied by 0 0.75. How much you get? Seven point zero eight times ten to the negative five. All right. So how can we get the hydrogen ion concentration now? Finding the POH. The hydrogen right. concentration. Yes. Yeah, so two things. You can get... use the the KW thing. Right. So two ways. KW is equal to H plus times the OH minus, right? H plus is equal to KW divided by OH. OH. And KW is one times 10 to the minus 14. Divided by sir, then give with them constants here on the exam. You're supposed to know that man. Just one times ten to the fourteen, I can't forget. If you forget it, if you forget it, you have a second way. All right. Divided by seven point zero eight times ten to the minus five. What's the answer? One point four oh, one yeah, times. 1. Times 10 to the negative 10. All right, that's the hydrogen ion concentration. Next, we know that pH of tone, if you have the hydroxide ion concentration, this method is a bit, it's a bit longer than over here. So you would have to find the pOH. Okay, Sir, is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 10 or to the negative 20? You're asking me what I have on the board here, or is it that you get negative 20? Sir, I got negative 20. A negative 10. How much person get negative 10? That's where it out. I got negative 10. Because it would have. All right, just double yes, check your answer for me. Don't have my oh, sir. So you never finish the question over here, so the pH of fine. Hmm? Are you going to do it? You just define the H plus concentration. You never find the pH. Not as yet. Are you just going to go? Okay. I'm showing the two ways. So one way, 
Once you get the hydroxide ion concentration, you use you transpose this formula, get the H plus concentration. H plus ion concentration. This alternatively, you can find the POH, which is negative log hydroxide ion concentration. 7.08 times 10 to the negative 5. How much is that? Anybody work it out? 4.14. 4 4.15. 4.15? 4 yeah. Right. So now pH is equal to 14 minus 4.15, which is equal to 9.85. Yeah. All right. And so H plus concentration is equal to antilog negative 9.85. How much is that? One point four one times ten to the negative ten. All right. One point four one times ten to the negative ten. So either ways, you'll get the same answer. It's just that this one is quicker. All right, so pH is equal to negative log 1.41 times 10 to the minus 10, which I get? 9.85. All right. Yeah. And the pH from the quest, calculate the pH of this. Oh, in the first question, what was the pH? 9.85? Yes, sir. All right. Let's see, it worked back out 9.85. We get antilog on the calculator. Not sure what brand calculator you have, but if your calculator have a shift button, it have a shift button, you press shift, negative, shift log, sorry. Press shift, log, negative, P, negative, the concentration. Hold on, we don't all get anti log, right? Shift log, negative, pH. So the pH was 9.85, shift log, negative, 9.85. All right, someone else is okay. All right. All right, so you should know how to calculate pH given KB, KB given pH, KA from pH and so forth. Can I clear the screen? Anybody writing? Just check in before I clear the screen. Get a screen. I said earlier, H plus don't exist in solution. Is the edge of sodium ion. But to keep it simple, write H plus. This is if this is the acid, water will act as a what? In the presence of an acid, water will act as a act as a base. Yes. Yeah. So, as you can see, this is a reversible reaction. All right, if we look at the reverse 
reaction rate, which of these two will donate a proton? Will this donate a hydrogen or the hydrogen sodium ion? Hydrogen sodium ion. All right, so that's your conjugate acid. And this will upset the proton. So it is the conjugate base. So in the forward reaction, ethanoic acid is the acid, water is the base. For the reverse reaction, whatever is acting as the acid, that's your conjugate acid. Whatever is acting as the base is a conjugate base. The next way to look at it, your acid will become the conjugate base. And the base will become the conjugate acid. And so if anything should come up about conjugate acid base pair, I identify in it. All right, that is what it is. Sir, can you write a like a note saying conjugate acid is like the proton um, donator? The conjugate acid is just the acid in the reverse reaction. But I can't, if you have it in terms of that. All right. I'm going to clear the screen now. All right, so a buffer solution is one that resists changes in pH. When you add, and this part is important, a small amount, all right, small amount. If you add a lot of acid or base, the buffer will be discharged. You can only add a small amount of acid or a base, and the buffer solution will resist any significant change in the pH. You have acidic buffer and you have a basic buffer. Acidic buffer is a 
buffer with the pH below seven. An acidic buffer has a pH below seven, which is made from a weak acid and its salt. What will you have inside your weak? What will you have inside of your acidic buffer? Sodium ethan, no, it's CH3COONA. You will have a lot of ethanoid ions. You will have a lot of these, a lot of this ion. It's not coming from the acid, all right? Most well. You will get a few when the ethanoic acid dissociates, but most of it is coming from sodium ethanoid, which is a soluble salt. So a lot of ethanoid ion from sodium ethanoid. I'm just going to use those three for example. You will also have H plus ions present, all right? This sodium ion is not of importance here. So you will have a lot of ethanoic acid molecule as well, CH3CO, right? Because the acid and the salt. You will have a lot of unionized ethanoic acid molecule. They have hydrogen ion, ethanoic ion, and ethanoic acid. What will happen if we add acid to this buffer? Just remember, regardless of the buffer you get, right? Whatever you're adding, if you add an acid, there should be something to remove it. And the acid is in, so let's say you add HCl, right? Whichever acid you add, we are not interested in the negative ion. That does not change the pH. The hydrogen ion is what changes the pH. So we focus on the hydrogen ion. Right, so if you add the hydrogen ion, something in there must be, something must be in the buffer that will combine with the hydrogen ion, right? So ethanoid ion can combine with the hydrogen ion here. Remember, ethanoid ion, Don't need to show the full thing. Ethanoid ion can give CH3COO minus plus H plus. So you have a lot of ethanoid ions present. So the acid that you add to it can combine with the ethanoid ion to form bulk. So this is the equation that will happen. And this is the reaction that will have COO minus plus H plus give CH3 COO, right? So any hydrogen ions that we add, it will, they will be removed. So the equilibrium would actually put a... Right, as in... Right. Equilibrium will shift to the left. Now remember, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. So the equilibrium will not shift back to the right because weak acid barely give up any hydrogen ions. Right? So when the equilibrium shift to the left, it will stay to the left. So that is how you remove the excess hydrogen ions that you add to it, right? If you add a base, 
if you add a base, something in there must, there must be something in there to, to remove it. If you introduce hydroxide ion, what is there for it to react with? It can hydrogen. react. It can react with hydrogen ion, and it can react with the ethanoic acid. So let me just put that equation down here. So H plus can combine with OH minus form water. Also, a 3 co H can react with OH minus, and you will get CH3CO minus plus water. So it can accept the hydrogen from the acid to form water, and it can combine with hydrogen ions present to form water but remember it's a weak acid so you, you will have much more ethanoic acid molecules than hydrogen ions so this reaction here is the one that will most likely to occur because you will have a lot more unionized ethanoic acid molecules than the hydrogen ions so this is the equation for when you add a base. This is the equation for when you add an acid. Right? When you add a base to the buffer, this is what will happen. When you add an acid to the buffer, this is what will happen. That is how it resists changes in pH. If you add OH ion, it is going to re remove it. Just a point to note. pH will increase. Slightly, because it's still an equilibrium reaction. So the OH ions will not completely be removed. So when you add a base, pH increase slightly. When you add an acid, pH decrease slightly. So resisting the pH don't mean it don't change any at all. It just change a little, but the pH is, the pH range is still able to be maintained. That is why you have to add a small amount, because if you add too much hydrogen ions, then the amount of ethanoid ion cannot remove all of them, or a large amount of them. So that's how the buffer works. The basic buffer, it would be made from a weak base and itself. All right, I'm going to do a calculation for the week for buffers. All right, is anybody writing? I'm going to clear the screen.
All right, so let's look at the calculate the pH, a buffer, using zero point two five moles per dm cube ethanolic acid. And zero point one five moles per dm cube sodium ethanol. Let's say the Ka for the acid is equal to. Don't remember ethanol acid, but I'm just going to a number. Let's say two point five times ten to the negative. Right. And so this is what you will do. You have the Ka, so the assumptions. We assume that the ethanoid ion concentration is equal to the concentration of the salt. In this case, it is sodium ethanoid. So on pH, it is negative log concentration of hydrogen ion. And we know that Ka, but this, you won't use H plus squared because the H plus is not equal to the concentration of the salt. So this one is CHUCO minus H plus divided by the concentration of the acid. Right, concentration of this ion is whatever this salt is. We need to transpose for the hydrogen ion concentration. H plus is equal to Ka times the acid divided by the concentration of the ion. Don't have to show all of this. But just if once you remember that H plus is equal to this, you can go ahead and just plug it in. One second. All right, so let's go now. Concentration of the acid is 0 0.25 Ka, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 0 0.15. Somebody work out this for me. Anybody working in? Wait, may I get one big old number? Four point one seven times ten to the eighty-four. Alright, thank you. Oh yeah, let me get you. All right, so pH negative log four point one seven times ten to the negative four. How much I get?
three point three eight. Yeah. Three point three eight. All right, so the PK, the KA given was 2.5 times 10 to the minus four. PKA is negative log of KA. So negative log 2.5 times 10 to the, to the minus four is how much? Negative negative log two point five times ten to the minus four is how much? Two point three zero. Is it three point three point six zero? All right, so three point one six. All right, concentration. No, sir, three point six zero. Three point six zero. Yes, sir, just a three point six. Mm. All right, let me use an actual example because I made up these numbers. But this is an X formula for, for buffers. But it should have worked. But I'm going to use an actual example. I'm just fine. Sir, you can repeat why you never squared the H plus? Like, oh, the this reason why, right. So remember, the assumption is that the ethanoid ion is equal to the concentration of the salt. Remember, all right, when you have the weak acid, right? CH3, COO, mine, sorry. This is the weak acid, dissociate to give this plus H plus, which are in a one to one yeah. mole ratio. However, when you add this, this sodium ethanoid, CH3COONA, it is going to fully dissociate with ethanoid ion and sodium ion, right? So based on that, will the concentration of hydrogen ions still be equal to the ethanoid ion? The answer is no. Right. Because of ethanoid ion coming from the salt as well. So anytime so, I see a question like this, never it's square the H plus. Once it's a buffer question, you, you do not square it. Because they are no longer equal. A weak acid where the as if the source of the ethanoid ion is just the acid, then they are equal. But once you include a salt, this ion, it will no longer be equal. All right. All right. Let's listen. get in third now. So All right. let's touch the equilibrium quickly. That, that I lost a pick and then we'll leave. Yeah. Oh, let me just clear this. All right, quickly, somebody, let's at least principle. What does it state? Subtitle system. It counteracts the. Or was it Jared? A J person? A J name? Was answering? Um, sir, I was saying that when stress is applied to a system, mm -hmm. the system opposed to stress by shifting to the by shifting to the direction where where the stress was applied. All right, so you leave out one keyword equilibrium. So when a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, all right, the equilibrium, as I want to say the system will shift the equilibrium in a direction to counteract stress. So just remember, stress 
will be applied to a system at equilibrium. So don't leave out at equilibrium. So apply the stress to a system at equilibrium. Equilibrium, or this, the system will shift the equilibrium in a direction that counteracts the stress, all right? Quickly, factors that affect the stress, right? What are we referring to? What are the three conditions? Temperature, temperature, temperature pressure, and pressure. concentration. All right, temperature, pressure, concentration. There's one equation when they ask about equilibrium, I don't know, they just love that equation. SO2 plus O2. Give two SO3. Delta H. I know it's negative something. I don't remember how much. I'm just going to put a number. All right. We're starting with temperature. All right. Let me ask this. For this reaction here, is it exothermic or endothermic? Exo. Exothermic. All right. For those of you who are new to the class, if you are not sure, as in how to approach this question, you'll get an equilibrium reaction. Whatever sign is in front, whatever sign I get for, del for delta H, that is for the forward reaction. The fact that you see negative here, the forward reaction is acceptable. All right? Which means that when the forward reaction is favored, what will happen to the temperature? It increases. All right. So whenever this, when the forward reaction is favored, the temperature will increase. All right. You see the reverse reaction? No, it is the opposite. If the forward is exothermic, the reverse is what? Endo, so it will decrease. Right. So the endo is on the left hand side, exo is on the right hand side. So if it shifts to the left, the temperature will decrease. Yes, sir. Quickly now, if we increase the temperature, what will the system want to do? It will go on decreasing, so it will go shift to the reactant side. All right. So let me say that again. If we increase the temperature, right? Set the direction, the equilibrium will shift for the following. All right, first, increase in temperature. If we increase the temperature, the system is going to want to decrease it, as I said. These that you are seeing on the screen, these are the options for the system, not us, all right? The system want to increase the temperature, it shift the equilibrium to the right hand side. The system want to decrease the the temperature, it shifts the equilibrium to the left-hand side. So if we increase the temperature, the system will want to decrease. The equilibrium has to shift to the left. All right, so it will shift left. So naturally, if we decrease the temperature, where will the equilibrium shift? The right, the right. Right. No, in terms of pressure, when it comes to pressure, what do we use? The mole. All right. Yeah. So on the left hand side, how many moles of gas on? Let me balance two. the equation. It should be a two there. All right. So on the left hand side, how many moles do we have? Three. Three. Three, all right. Two SO and one O2. So we have three moles on this side. How many do we have on the right hand side? Two. Oh. All right. Two. 
if we decrease the pressure, what will the system want to do? Increase, one, increase, it. increase it. All right. The side with more moles, it favors. Okay. All right. The side with fewer moles has a lower pressure. If the system wants to increase the pressure, where will it shift? To the side with fewer moles. To the reactant side, the left side. No, to the side with fewer moles. Not fewer moles. Can be. And if you move, hold on, the hold on. Side. let me repeat it. Somebody TV. All right. If we decrease the pressure, right, what will the system want to do? It's a go on increase it. Okay. Oh, so it's a go safe one. Go to the left side. Right. Yeah. Remember this side that has more moles. Once you favor the side with more moles, the pressure will increase. So when we decrease the pressure, the system wants to increase it. It has to favor the side with more moles. So it will shift the equilibrium to the left. The equilibrium will shift to the left, all right? When it comes to temperature and pressure, you can't say you increase the pressure on the left-hand side or the pressure on the right hand side. The can't say you increase the pressure on the, sorry, can't say you increase the temperature on the right hand side or the left hand side. When it comes to pressure and temperature, you can just increase it for the entire system. All right? It's not like concentration. For temperature and pressure, you can't increase it on a particular side. You just increase it overall. All right, so just make that clear. All right, concentration now. If we increase the concentration of SO earth, let me write it down. If we increase the concentration of SO3, what will happen? The system will go and decrease it. And to decrease it, it will do what? Shift to the reactor. All right, it's going to shift left. So when it shifts left, it will, let me just put this as a note. Please remember, remember this. Any side, any side that equilibrium shifts to, any side that equilibrium shifts to, those substances will increase. Those substances will increase. The question, in the first scenario, when we increase the temperature, what will happen to the concentration of SO3? If you increase the temperature? Yeah, what will happen to the concentration of SO3? It's about the decrease. concentration will decrease. All right. The concentration of SO3 decrease. Because members of the equilibrium are going to shift to the left side, so right, they're right. going to increase. They say our favor. Yes. Right, so the SO2 and the O2 will increase. What will happen to in the second scenario when you decrease the temperature? What will happen to the concentration of SO3? It will increase. Um, SO3. Yeah. Will increase. Increase. Right. And the others, the reactant. Decrease. Yeah. When you decrease the pressure, what will happen to the concentration of SO3? Um, decrease. Right. And if you increase the concentration of SO3, what will happen to the concentration? It will increase. 
that means if you increase the oh sorry sorry decrease and yeah and over the star go increase Apparently, that no, we can clear the screen. All right, can you clear the screen? As a yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, as an overview, so anytime that any side that the equilibrium shifts to in concentration, only concentration. Come on, no. That is overall. Anyway, for, shift. for the whole of them? Yeah. Okay. Um, N2 plus H2 gives NH3. Uh, delta H is negative something, let's just say 300. All this balance again. Have a two year and a three year. Tell me what you will do to pressure. I'll give you two minutes. Tell me what you will do in terms of pressure, in terms of temperature, and in terms of concentration. If you want to increase so your objective is to increase the yield of ammonia, which is saying you want to increase the concentration of ammonia. So using pressure, temperature, and concentration, what will you do to each of them to increase the yield of ammonia? The only assistance I will give you is that for each of these, whatever adjustment, you make, you must ensure that the equilibrium shifts to the right. Whatever you're adjusting, equilibrium has to shift to the right hand side because ammonia is on the right. And as we said, anywhere equilibrium shifts, those substances will increase. So if all of these equilibrium must shift to the right. I'll give you two minutes and you try that. All right, so for an exothermic reaction, when you decrease the temperature, it will be cheap to the right. You can do it for endo as well. So let's just say for an endothermic reaction, you will increase the temperature, right? Increase temperature, equilibrium shifts to the right. Okay, so when you want the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side in terms of temperature, for the exothermic reaction, you decrease it, and for the endothermic reaction, you increase it. Meaning, uh, well, and when I say for the endothermic reaction, I am not talking about the reverse. I'm talking about if the sign was positive. If the sign was positive, it means that the forward reaction is endothermic, right? Whatever sign you get, that is always for the forward reaction. So these two statements, is referring to the, the forward reaction. Go ahead now. What do you say something like, I have to decrease the temperature of the NH2 and 3H2? Right, remember, that is what I was saying. You cannot decrease. When it comes to temperature and pressure, you cannot decrease it for a particular side. Remember, when you're talking about a system, is the container it is taken. So this would be like your equilibrium here. 
you cannot increase temperature for, let's say, N2 or NH3. All of them are in the container. You can just increase. Okay, the, sir. Right. So you can just increase the temperature of the container or increase the pressure in the container. All right. So all of them are in the container. So you can't adjust temperature or pressure for one of them. Only the concentration. You can add a little ammonia, decrease the ammonia and so forth. All right. Only for concentration, you can adjust the nitrogen or the hydrogen or the ammonia. But speaking of concentration, what can you do? So let's say if you want to adjust N2, what would you do with the concentration of N2? Would you increase it or decrease it? What did you do, sir? What will you do to the concentration of N2 if you want the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side? You would um you would decrease it? Increase it. De so, decrease it. Decrease. All right, if you decrease the concentration. Oh, no, you would increase it. Increase too. it. Yeah. Sir, it's all because I'm gonna understand. You want the equilibrium to shift to the right to the right hand side over here. Yeah. Decrease the concentration of N2. What will the system want to do? The system will go and increase it. So where will the equilibrium shift? To the part where the increase. Similarly, Sir, when you are, when you are dealing with concentration, we are look for the moles too. No, just listen to me all that. I said that if we decrease the concentration of N2, right, the system will want to increase the concentration of N2. Remember we said that what? Anywhere equilibrium shift, what will happen? Right, the start will increase. Say, uh, All right. So the system want to increase N2, where will equilibrium shift? To the uh, reactant like side. Exactly. But where do we want it to shift? The right. The right. So what will you have to do to the concentration of N2? Scott and I yeah, was right. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, that will um, increase it. Right. So when you increase so the system it. I go on, decrease it, say, to the favor the right-hand side. Exactly. Okay, so if the H is positive, the forward direction is X, so. Um, no, no, give me a second. If it's positive, the forward is XO and vice versa. The positive is for, the sign is always for the forward reaction. So if this was a plus, it would mean the, the forward reaction is endothermic. All right, and the reverse is XO. So if it was a plus sign, it would mean the forward reaction is endo and the reverse is XO. So the sign is always for the forward reaction. So in this case, because it is negative, it means that the forward reaction is XO and the reverse is endo. All right. If you decrease the concentration of ammonia, where will the equilibrium shift? Sir, repeat again, please. If you decrease the concentration of ammonia, where will the equilibrium shift? To ammonia, so that is correct. You don't want to increase it, right? Okay, right. so I'm going to have to stop here. Probably about six o'clock. If anybody interested, I might start as a Zoom at six. I want to join. <laughs> so you're funny. Hmm? No, it's just if anybody wants to join it, yeah.
I will let you know still if I'm doing it. Okay. All right, sir. Okay, one question. 